All right, this is an introduction to parallel programming. We're going to discuss the different types of uh, programming paradigms, and some different libraries and, and application programming interfaces that are common uh, in, when we're talking about parallel programming. So just to take care of some terminology first, um, well, we, we talk about a, a node. You can think of this as a standalone computer. Uh, it's similar to like a desktop computer or even a laptop. Uh, this will be comprised of multiple CPUs, cores, processors, possibly even GPUs or many integrated core accelerators, um, things that you would normally find in a high performance, say, desktop computer. Uh, even though they don't have that form factor of a desktop computer, they're typically blades uh, that are located in a rack and networked together to find, uh, to form what we call a supercomputer. Right? So a supercomputer is just a collection of nodes, and each of these nodes is sort of a standalone desktop computer. Uh, again, they don't they don't look like a desktop computer, um, but they have all the essential features that a desktop computer would have. Um, the next thing is, you know, these are all sort of synonym, synonyms: uh, CPU, central processing unit, so socket, processor core. Uh, I mean, technically, there's a difference between a CPU and a socket, as you or a, or a socket and a core, as you could have multiple cores per socket. But for the purposes of this class, it's fine just to uh, use the same, um, you know, or use them as synonyms. So this is the singular sort of execution point in a computer. And finally, then, we have tasks. And a, and a task would be uh, a single instance of computational work. So essentially, what we're going to do is um, often we have multiple tasks that we can do at the same time. And we're going to then run them on multiple processors or multiple cores simultaneously. And those cores can exist on a single node, or they can exist across a network of nodes uh, on a supercomputer. So there's different types of uh, parallel architectures. Um, the, the, the sort of most common um, distri is a distributed memory. The you know, most common form of a supercomputer would be a distributed memory form factor. This is where, again, like I said, you have a collection of nodes. Each one of these uh, uh, would represent a node where you have a CPU and memory. And when, I say, when we're talking about memory here, we're talking about RAM, uh, random access memory. Not, not hard disk space. The hard disk space would be shared amongst the whole network. Um, but uh, essentially, you'd have a whole network of individual nodes uh, that each have CPUs and some memory. And, and then you'd send the tasks off to each of those and communicate over the network when, when needed uh, to share information between the different computers. Um, the, the other um, form factor is what's called a shared memory computer. Um, these were pretty rare or very expensive until until very recently with the advent of uh, general purpose graphics processing units and, and Intel mini integrated core chips, uh, which are both a type of shared memory accelerator, you would call them. Um, but uh, you can have a, a more traditional vectorized uh, CPU type uh, computer that also has shared memory. Uh, again, memory being RAM, and in this case you'd have uh, multiple CPUs that all have access to the same RAM, and you can use uh, uh, an advantage of that, uh, or you can you can take advantage of this to do different computational tasks on each CPU without having to communicate uh, across a network um, when needed to share information between the tasks. Um, more often than not, this is the type of uh, architectures that we're seeing nowadays in modern supercomputers. Uh, that is, uh, basically, you have a collection of nodes where each node then has multiple CPUs uh, spread out across a network, or even uh, of the form factor where uh, you have a network of nodes and each node has possibly multiple CPUs and multiple, say, GPUs, graphics processing units, which can be used to do numerical computations. Or uh, even, uh, you know, it's not listed here, but you could you could uh, count many integrated core chips uh, in a similar way to graphics processor units. They both plug into the same sort of uh, PCI bus on on a uh, on a computer's hard uh, motherboard. So 
these are common programming models. Uh, you would call these application programming interfaces or particular libraries. Um, and so for shared memory computing, you have several uh, POSIX threads, which are a, a POSIX Unix standard, uh, OpenMP, um, uh, OpenACC, which is a, a very new thing that, that will probably one day uh, encompass OpenMP as well. Um, if you're working on an Intel machine, you can use uh, thread building blocks. So these are application programming interfaces, which would be a, a standard or um, a standard set of functions uh, that you would call in a, in a certain way or possibly uh, instructions for the compiler that you would use in a certain way uh, to, say, unroll for loops or do other types of things. Um, and, uh, and a lot of them have, have interfaces in multiple languages, so Fortran, C, C++, these type of things. Um, additionally, since we talked about GPUs, uh, GP, GPUs, general purpose graphics processing, processing units, these are GPUs that are intended to do numerical computations on and not just for, for graphics processing. Um, there you have CUDA, which is a, is a standard by NVIDIA. It's an, an application programming interface uh, that only works on NVIDIA machines, and uh, they have their own compilers and such. Um, OpenCL uh, is uh, introduced by Apple and was later open sourced. Uh, but it's a way to do GPU, GPU calculations on any GPU. So it's supported by NVIDIA, but you could also use it on, uh, you know, Intel graphics processing units, for example. And again, here you see OpenACC, which is supported by NVIDIA and PGI compilers and others. And this is a way to sort of standardize development between GPUs and CPUs. Uh, it's an effort to do that so that you could write the same code and have it exploit multiple threads on a CPU or uh, the graphics processing units as well. Um, some, some really new techniques, if you have an integrated, uh, an, an Intel mini integrated core chip, uh, you could use a technique called offloading where essentially you're going to move uh, all the data from the CPU onto uh, the mini integrated core chip uh, and have the work done there. Of course, there's some communi co communication costs associated with that. Uh, and then even newer, there's this idea of MYO. Uh, MYO is an acronym that stands for mine, yours, ours. And uh, th this idea is that you can essentially write the code in one way, uh, and then the computation will be shared between the CPU or, or multiple CPUs uh, that share RAM uh, along with the integrated, the, the, the mini integrated core chip that's uh, available on that node as well. For distributed memory, there's really only only one way: uh, MPI, message passage, inter message passing interface. Uh, this is the de, de facto standard for distributed memory computing. And one nice thing about it is, um, once you once you learn this, you can actually use it to do computations on shared memory machines as well. Uh, you may not get quite the performance boost that you would by using some combination or you know using. Uh, the shared memory, but the nice thing is it does work. It'll work on distributed memory machines and a shared memory machine. And most of us now, even in our laptops, for example, have multiple um, cores that we could exploit. So if you use MPI, you could you know, write code that could run well on a supercomputer, but also take advantage of the multiple cores in your, um, in your laptop without really any extra work. And so, you know, again, it stands for message passing interface. This is an application programming interface. This is not a programming language. There are implementations of this uh, in Fortran, C, and C++. And then, of course, uh, we've already learned how you can build wrappers. So uh, in this class, we'll actually use a Python wrapper to the C++ um, application programming interface of MPI. And, uh, that's called MPI for Pi, and there'll, there'll be a whole uh, additional lecture on on that uh, and on MPI itself. Um, and again, as I mentioned earlier, most modern machines are hybrids. That is, the, you know, they are uh, most modern supercomputers are some hybrid in the, in that they have both distributed memory nodes uh, as well as on node you have either some GPU or mini integrated core acceleration or at least multiprocessors. And so there's an opportunity to do hybrid parallelization where you use 
uh, MPI to essentially send data uh, between the nodes and then on nodes use some type of uh, POSIX threads or Intel, Intel TBB or something like that to speed up the computation even further. So uh, th there's several different ways to kind of uh, design parallel programs. The only one I'm going to discuss here is really with re because it's it's the most common uh, in engineering applications, and that is that uh, we're going to split the problem data set up. So we'll have some problem data set. This could be some uh, large mesh associated with a finite element computation or uh, some large data set associated with uh, that you want to perform machine learning out on, um, and uh, so then we're going to split that data up into individual tasks where the work will be performed individually. And then often, of course, these uh, tasks cannot be performed in isolation. When they can, that's good, and it's called a, an embarrassingly parallel program. Uh, but often they can't be performed in isolation, and so then there's communication amongst the tasks. Uh, and that's what we'll use MPI for. So finally, I'd like to just end with the resources. Uh, you know, all the figures in this uh, talk came from from this website, but it's also just a good resource uh, and fairly up to date with respect to uh, parallel computing. So um, if you have access to the live slides, you can, you can click on this hyperlink and take a look at that for more information.